I want to talk to you about the uh, new the revenue growth that you're projecting, um, and one of those is the twenty one and a half million dollars that you're projecting for the assessment of the uh, opioid drug manufacturers and distributors. Um, these are new policy policy proposals, and we don't yet have any uh, legislation that addresses this. Um, so how we get to, to this number is a mystery to me, um, because there is no information on this on this tax because we don't have the legislation. So how did you determine this number and where did you come up with a $21.5 million that you would get from the, the taxation on the manufacturing distribu distribution of the opioids? Um, the, 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 you're right that the legislation hasn't come over here yet, but what we're looking at is actually tied in with the registration and licensing fee for distributors, so um, the numbers are worked out through a combination of, of uh, research by OMB and Aurea, and they determined that we could expect roughly, we're, we're modeling it on a Minnesota model um, and looking at uh, potential uh, potential distributors that would be, have to pay the fund, that is what they estimate we would bring in, roughly 20 million. Well, that's it. You're estimating us on something that you, we don't have a policy about yet. Is that correct? Correct. So but we'll, I mean, there's, there's um, ideas of what the policy will look like and the estimates are based on that, but it will come over in a package of legislation to uh, the Assembly and Senate and then we'll work on the language together. So this is a tax on the manufacturers and, distrib and distributors, correct? And you know, I, I know I said this to you last time when you were here, but mm -hmm. we've never seen a tax that's been not passed on to the consumer. So this will be mm -hmm. an increase in a tax on what is a legal drug. I mean, and I don't see how this, this actually um, helps to solve the opioid crisis. I mean, as we increase the price of opioids, it's, <laughs> There's no connection between increasing the price of legal opioids, which are used for legitimate pain patients, mm -hmm. and decreasing the opioid crisis. Because one of the problems that we see is um, as people become addicted to the opioids, then they turn to heroin because they're less expensive than the opioids. So how is this morally, how do we compromise, I mean, how do we balance this within ourselves to say it's morally okay to increase the tax on a drug that's legal mm -hmm. and that is needed for legitimate pain patients? You know, as you all know, I'm a healthcare provider. I s deal with many people who are legitimate pain patients. We consistently are putting up obstacles for legitimate pain patients to be able to get their medications whether it's by making it increasingly difficult to get a prescription, mm -hmm. um, or now we're going to increase the price because we're going to tax the distributor and manufacturer. This is, th those taxes will be passed on to the consumer. Would you agree? I think it'll depend on what the final piece of legislation looks like. That's not the intent. Um, the intent is to help raise funds that will help fight the opioid crisis. But, but again, I go back to why this drug? Why, you know, you've, you've chosen a, a group of, a class of drugs that are legal, and it sounds good because we're trying, you know, and we all want to fight the opioid crisis. So we, we've chosen a class of drugs and to, to tax. We don't tax any other drugs. We still tax mar medical marijuana, which is also a legal drug in the state of New Jersey. So how, would, how do we, I just don't, I can't come to terms with how that's morally okay to increase a tax on a legal drug and I know it's, it's got, it sounds good, but it really hurts the people who, the patients who, who need these drugs. And as we do this, we're, we're gonna see that people, the, the generic manufacturers are gonna stop, stop producing the drugs. We're gonna drive up the cost of legal drugs with, with the promise of fighting a crisis which is, is tr legitimate. But, I just don't see where they, there's a sort of a false equivalency there. Like, how does one help the other? It really doesn't. You're hurting legitimate pain patients with an assumption that you're going to raise this tax, which we don't even know if it's going to get through the legislature, um, with a, an increase in a tax, which so it's a you're hurting the patients who need it without really knowing that you're going to raise that money. Number one, but number two, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. 
Again, Assemblywoman, it's a proposal, and mm -hmm. it will be worked, uh, you know, the devil will be in the details as it's worked out between uh, the legislature and the administration, but the intent is to help raise money uh, through uh, the registration fees on distributors that can be then used to help battle the opioid crisis. I understand the concept, <clears throat> and I understand it sounds good, but again, these, there's never been a tax that hasn't been passed on to the consumer. This tax mm -hmm. will be passed on to the patients, the legitimate pain patients. Again, we've already put up enough obstacles for that legitimate pain patients. I can't say that term enough, because I don't know that people actually understand the number of legitimate pain patients, people with crushed vertebrae, post-trauma uh, patients, patients who are true pain patients, who are being hurt by this, um, just the, what we've done in the past. I know it, we're, we're looking to be so good to, for society, but it, this doesn't, in my view, actually help the opioid crisis. Because again, we're gonna drive up the cost of the opioids, which is then gonna, is what's contributed to the heroin um, epidemic anyway, because the, the, they're, they're, they're addictive and then they're expensive. And then the people turn to heroin. So they just don't go hand in hand. Um, I just would like people to think about this. And again, it's more importantly, it's a, you've got a, it written into the budget and there's no policy in place to collect this tax. So, you know, this may not pass. So you it's one of the four areas where we still have to pass um, legislation. So I just want to make sure that we have this out on the record that we, we don't want to do more to hurt the legitimate pain patients in the state of New Jersey than we uh, that we have done with the promise of making it the opioid crisis better because they just don't go hand in hand. Thank you.